I'm Tim. Welcome to Watch Want, and thanks for logging on. Today we're looking at the Romain Jerome Moon Orbiter Speed Metal. One of 25 made, this flying tour beyond Romain Jerome can be seen on our website, watchyouwant.com. It can be purchased there, and if you enjoy these videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Watch You Want Inc. Now, the Moon Orbiter Speed Metal was the 2014 25-piece limited edition follow-up to 2013's 25-piece Moon Orbiter Flying Tourbillon. Part of the Moon DNA collection at Romain Jerome, that means it has two unique features. Here, Moon Dust impregnated on its laser-cut dial and pieces of the actual Apollo 11 spacecraft built into the steel of the PVD black case. Now you can see on my wrist, six and a third inches, 16 centimeters in circumference. This one wears the size of a Saturn V. I will say, however, because of a unique set of lugs and an unconventional shape, conventional descriptions of size don't suit this one entirely. The one that does, however, is the thickness. Just over 20 millimeters thick at its extreme point with a side that's about as flat as the side of a bank of a barn door. I mean, that's, that's a sheer flank. That really is a cliff wall right there. You're not going to get a dress cuff up over that. Heck, you're probably not even going to be able to slide a space suit over this one. But the bottom line is, if you were looking for discretion, you wouldn't be wearing this watch. But what it features that really sets its ergonomic equation apart from almost anything else out there is a lug system articulated and spring-mounted that's as unconventional as everything else about this watch. Now, at its extremity, 57.5 millimeters from the lug to lug, outer lug to outer lug, but when you compress it, it takes almost a full 10 millimeters off the width of the watch. So it goes from downright unwearable, or if you have a truly huge wrist, quite comfortable, to a nice snug fit, even on a smaller wrist like mine. It really does hug the contours of your wrist because the lugs adapt to you. Moreover, because it has a very supple strap, and I mean extremely flexible, this one actually curves tight and easily around a smaller wrist. All you need, and it has a nice flat case back to suit the purpose, but all you need is a nice flat and broad wrist. You don't have to have a big wrist to be able to wear this watch securely or comfortably. I will say, however, that um, to continue the space theme, it's a truly heavy payload because PVD steel makes this one fairly massive. You're not going to forget it's there. Fortunately, again, because of those lugs and a case back that is broad and flat, it spreads all that mass quite nicely. Even without lunar gravity, this one's very manageable. But what sets it apart is the combination of an unconventional case that's visible on every side thanks to sapphire viewports with a flying tourbillon movement constructed for Romain Jerome by La Joupere of La Chaux de Fonds. Now the highlight is the dial. Twin elements horizontally opposed. On the one side, you've got the time, actually quite legible for a dial that amounts to black on black. Thanks to the red lacquered hands, it's very easy to read. Now your constant running seconds right here at three o'clock or what approximates three o'clock on this unconventional case features a flying tourbillon, so anchored on one side, there's a lot of depth to this construction, and you can view it from every angle thanks to the almost prismatic construction of this case. It's quite beautifully finished, and you can see the gorgeous bridge work, the mirror-polished anglage the Concepto executes for Romain Jerome. The watch cuts an aesthetic that almost I want to say splits the difference between something like MBNF and Hublot. As unlikely a pairing as that is, I feel like this watch has elements of both. It has the outrageous, kind of happy-go-lucky sensibility of the most extrovert Hublot models, but it feels very much a horological machine in the MBNF tradition. And because of the exotic complication, the three-dimensional construction, and the unusual way of presenting time, this watch really has more than a little bit of early MBNF to it, in my opinion. Now, the dial is a standout that actually gets equal billing with the flying tourbillon, itself supposed to be reminiscent of an inverted Starship Enterprise. Once again, sci-fi and space, that is, the, that is the narrative arc with this watch. But alongside the inverted enterprise, you can see that the dial is laser cut in the style of the latest Rolex Date 840s. That same technology is used to etch this sort of lunar landscape pattern. Now you have equal elements of craters and twinkling stars, so maybe we should call it more of a celestial theme than purely lunar. But what you can see is that it's nicely executed, intricate, beautifully finished, and it's a nice counterpoint, especially with the metallic cross members, to the movement on the back which features a lot of the same strong geometries, and yet again, that sort of 
celestial etched theme on the base plate itself. Now you can see as the rotor rotates, it is an automatic movement. This one's called the RJ3000A. 42 hours automatic, once again, built by Concep not Concepto, uh, La Jupere, pardon me, to essentially give this watch a high horology pedigree. Now, Le Jupere, formerly known as Jacquet, they're the people behind the Arnold & Son brands. So you can think of a lot of the high horology complications from that house. That's exactly who's behind this movement. Moreover, way back in the day as Jacquet, they helped design the original Gerard Perigo Ferrari Foudroyant chronograph. So that's where they're coming from. A fantastic background for a fantastic movement. And again, beautifully finished. It's got a sort of hybrid handcraft industrial look to it with elements of both but everything is gorgeous in its execution you have grained metallic finishes you have a sort of modified sunburst pattern you have gorgeous polished screw heads black polish in fact and because of the bridge work that builds up that three-dimensional flying tourbillon structure it really has a depth that's almost unheard of on a tourbillon movement because frankly most of them simply aren't this massive the watch has a lot going for it from an aesthetic standpoint if you like the offbeat and if you're a fan of that it doesn't get much better than this one now i'll add that it is a power reserve watch and you can see symmetrical apertures above and below the main dial principally for the sake of balance but this power reserve as you wind the watch manually actually sweeps to its extremity to indicate 42 hours fully charged and i'll mention although an automatic watch the tactile feeling of winding through the large knurled and rubberized crown is quite satisfying so every element of this experience from the ergonomics on the wrist to the look of the watch to the feature content the technology the finishing and of course the originality of the concept is to a very high level so while the watch has a little bit in common with Hublot's outlandish aesthetic and sensibility it is very much I would say MBNF in that the execution is flawless and the concept is fully realized with a true high horology slant thanks to Le Jeu Pere. This is an excellent execution by Romain Jerome and it's definitely more than a cut above their run-of-the-mill production. If they're looked at principally as purveyors of high-end image watches, uh, fashionable timepieces with a Swiss pedigree, this one's definitely in a different league. And with an original retail price of over $130,000, I've got to say that you get what you pay for. When purchased pre-owned, the value proposition is self-evident. This is a lot of watch for the money. In fact, this one is a space odyssey in a PVD stainless steel case. You can see it, and if you like, you can purchase this Romain Jerome Moon Orbiter Speed Medal on our website, watchyouwant.com.